In this video, we'll be going over the best Druid Wild Shapes. Since the level for Druid Wild Shapes caps out at CR1 for all but one archetype of Druids, I'm going to be focusing on CR1 and below Beast for this video, and probably going to higher level ones for a Moon Druid video in a different video. And at number 10, we'll have the Scouting Druid Wild Shape, which is the Little Spider. This is a CR0 creature and really should not be shapeshifted into for anything other than scouting, or for some cheese mechanics where maybe your entire party is holding their breath and they hop into a bag of holding, and then you wild shape into a spider and then sneak into the final boss room. Now, when it comes to scouting, generally one of the very small CR0 creatures does the job very well for whatever you're trying to accomplish. If you want to sneak through a cave, you can just turn into the CR0 spider. And most of the time you won't even need to do a stealth roll, as most dungeons and indoor things just have spiders in them naturally. It's very easy to assume you would just fit right in. However, if you do need to make a stealth roll, the spider does have a plus 4 to that stat, which is a pretty high bonus for a low CR creature. They can also walk on walls, so you can just kind of shimmy along the ceiling in order to scout out whatever you need. And if you need to make an attack, the spider has the potential to deal the most amount of damage out of all the CR0 creatures. Not that you'd want to use its bite, but it is an option. Now, there are other scouting animals available as well. If you're trying to scout at an area in an urban city, you could turn into a cat instead, for kind of the same reasons as a spider. Most people wouldn't think twice about a cat walking around in an alleyway. However, even in situations in which the cat might be useful, the spider also works in those situations. The only situation that's not better than the cat is if you specifically need more speed, since the cat does have two times the movement speed. So if you want to use one of your two wild shapes in order to scout ahead in a dungeon, you can't really go wrong with the spider. But mechanically speaking, you don't want to go into this form if you're trying to fight stuff, since it only has like one hit point, and all the other wild shapes on this list will be more focused on combat. And at number 9, we have the Wolf, who's a CR 1 4th creature, so it can be used as soon as you hit level 2 and gain the Wild Shape feature. Now, when it comes to CR 1 4th rating, there are a lot of diverse beasts to pick from, and the Wolf definitely does not beat out most of them when it comes to damage. But the reason it makes this list is because it's very well-rounded while also dealing decent damage for its challenge rating. If you want the highest damage, that's definitely the Giant Poisonous Snake. Although, since that beast technically has a swim speed, you can't use it until level 4, when you unlock the ability to transform into beasts with swim speeds. At which case, the CR will increase as well, so it won't be viable. Although, excluding the giant poisonous snake, there is the giant centipede which is usable, and is tied for dealing the second most amount of potential damage. Although, the giant centipede has a crazy low amount of health for only 4 on average, so it'll probably die to any one hit but it does have the potential to deal around 14 damage on average if your opponent fails the constitution save for its poison damage. Otherwise, it will only deal around 4 damage on average, which isn't very much. And it's a pretty low constitution save too. The wolf only deals about 7 damage on average, which is about a half the damage of the giant centipede. But it has two other things going well for it when it comes to that attack. The bite also has a chance to knock the target prone if they fail a strength saving throw. And the wolf has pack tactics, which gives it an advantage on attacks if you have an ally within 5 feet of their target. So you just have a higher chance to actually land that attack. And pack tactics is just so good that it kind of bumps the wolf up in its rating on this list a little bit, beating out other beasts which might do a little bit more damage, like the giant badger because of the extra effect on its one attack and how good pack tactics is. It also has above average speed at 40, it has about standard HP at 11, and it has slightly above average armor at a 13 AC. So it's a super well-rounded beast that deals decent damage and also has a bonus to its stealth, and an increased chance to track stuff due to its keen hearing and smell. Most beasts have one or the other, not both. There is another beast at the same CR rating who has pack tactics and multi-attack, which is the Velociraptor, who technically does deal a little bit more damage than the wolf, but has a slightly less health and is slightly slower with only a 30 foot movement speed. There is one other beast that competes with the wolf very closely though, and that's the giant wolf spider. It has the potential to deal 11 damage on average with its bite, assuming your opponent fails the constitution save on their poison. It has the exact same armor and HP, has a better stealth score at a plus 7, and even has a climbing speed, but does not have pack tactics. I kind of bumped the wolf up a lot because of its pack tactics, and the additional chance for it to knock a target prone 
while also having good defensive stats and speed. Pack Tactics just slightly beats out the bite that sometimes deals more damage, considering most of the other stats are the same, and most of the other beasts that appear in this list will be of a higher CR rating, except for one, which we'll get into in a bit. And at number 8, we have the Ape, who's a challenge rating 1 half, so you can't actually shapeshift into it until you hit level 4 on non-moon druids. The normal Ape has this really unique feature amongst all the beasts that the druid can turn into, and in that it's the only one that has a ranged attack. The Ape is able to use the Rock ability, which allows you to throw a rock up to 50 feet away for around 6 damage on average. It's not a lot of damage, but it also has the option to multi-attack in melee, with two fists attack which deal around 12 damage on average. And 12 damage is actually kind of around the average damage for CR 1 half beasts, so you won't really lose out on too much damage if you want to go for the ape for that rare ranged attack on a druid wild shape. And its stats aren't half bad either. It has a 30 foot climb speed, its health is 19 on average, which is actually kind of the high end for creatures of the CR ranking, and has 12 AC which is pretty standard. So, kind of like the wolf, it's really well-rounded, and it makes a spawn this list because it's well-rounded while also having a good special ability. That is, its ability to throw a rock sometimes, and the fact that it does have hands so it can potentially use items. Although the ape is beaten out by one of the beasts that's actually a lower challenge rating than it. And at number 7, we have the Stench Cow. This is a cow variant introduced with Volo's Guide to Monsters, and is only found as a native creature on the lower planes. So there's a chance you won't even be able to shapeshift into it, since one of the requirements is that your druid has seen the animal before. However, if you're able to shapeshift into this cow, it is absolutely the best CR 1 4th beast in the game. If anything, it's a little bit too overpowered. You see, the Stench Cow has a charge ability, where if it moves at least 20 feet in a straight line towards the target and then attacks it with its gore attack, the target will take an additional 2d6 piercing damage, on top of around the 7 damage on average from the gore. So both of those combined together allows the Stench Cow to deal around 17 damage on average with its first turn, which matches the giant centipede in damage, assuming a failed saving throw on that poison. So it's the second highest damaging combo for a CR 1 4th creature behind just attacking with a giant poisonous snake. And out of all the other CR 1 4th creatures that have a charge ability, the Stench Cow hits the hardest for some reason too. On top of that, it has resistance to cold, fire, and poison damage. I don't think any other beasts even have resistances at all. This is incredibly rare. And having three of them on top of that, with them being kind of the three most common types of damage, is really good. Like, so good, I probably would have put it on this list just for those resistances alone, but I'm not even done talking about all the good things about this beast yet. It also has a passive stench ability, where if any creature starts its turn within 5 feet of it, they have to succeed a constitution save or be poisoned until their next turn. In one of my campaigns, I played a blood hunter that had a magic item that basically had the exact same effect as this ability, and it was pretty good to just passively poison people sometimes without having to do anything other than stand next to them. It also has good stats. It has 15 health, so it's considered on the higher end of HP for its challenge rating, but only has 10 AC, which is a little bit lower than normal. So that's probably the only bad thing about this beast, is that it has a slightly lower than average armor class, which can be kind of ignored if you just use bark skin anyway. So since the stench cow is actually able to deal more damage than the ape, well on one of its turn anyway, assuming it uses charge, and has so many other great things going well for it, it kind of easily beats out a creature with a higher challenge rating than it, and is easily the best beast at the challenge rating of 1 4th, and even beats out a lot of the challenge rating 1 half creatures as well. Although, since it's kind of a rare beast, there is a high chance your DM won't let you turn into it, unless you write it into your backstory somehow, or just ask them beforehand. And at number 6, we have the Sea Lion. This is a CR 1 half beast from Ghost of Saltmarsh, and has a swim speed so you can't use it until level 4. But since it's CR 1 half, that's when you gain the ability to use swim speed creatures anyway. And this creature has a multi-attack that allows you to attack three times. And the average damage of all three of its attacks adds up to around 17 damage. Which allows it to easily beat out all the other spots on this list so far, and deal more damage than the giant poisonous snake. Which is kind of why you don't use the giant poisonous snake as a druid. There's just better creatures available once you gain the ability to go into swim speed creatures. Although the sea line has a couple of downsides to it which might make it not the smartest choice in the world to use, 
Its stats are fine. It's the same health as the Stench Cow, which is kind of average for a CR 1 half creature, but it has a 16 AC, which is the highest of all of the beasts, period. Not even the Mammoth has an AC that high, which is the biggest beast you can turn into as a Moon Druid. And of course, one of its biggest downsides is that it's an aquatic creature, so it has a very slow walking speed of only 15 feet, which is half the normal amount. It does have a 30 foot swim speed, so it moves the normal duration for underwater, and it can breathe air, so you don't have to worry about it dying if you transform into it on land, like you would a reef shark, for example. As the sea lion actually can't breathe water at all, as it has the hold breath trait where it can just hold its breath for 15 minutes underwater. Although, just like the stench cow, the sea lion is kind of a rare creature, as it lives along coastal regions and around islands at sea. So it is possible for your druid in a campaign to have never encountered a sea lion, and you won't be able to turn into one unless you ask your DM first. In which case, you might be better off just turned into a warhorse. This is another CR 1 half creature, which is kind of the inverse of the sea lion when it comes to movement speed, as it's able to move 60 speed on each of its turns, which is the fastest creature at the CR rating. It also has a charge ability, which allows it to attack twice with its hooves if your opponent fails a strength saving throw, and of course you run 20 feet in a straight line towards the creature. If you're able to actually get off that charge, the two hooves attacks actually deal more damage on average than the sea lion. It's just the sea lion can deal its high damage consistently without relying on a charge, which is why I put on this list over the warhorse, even the warhorse is also really good. It has a high hit points at 19, it has the option to be fitted with armor to bring its AC up to 18, Although, putting on armor takes time, so it's not something you can do immediately once you transform into the Warhorse. And at number 5, we have the Giant Vulture. Now we're getting into the CR1 creatures, which is what Druids can turn into once they hit level 8. And at level 8, they also gain the ability to transform into flying creatures. So if you want to turn into a flying creature, the Giant Vulture is the best bet. It has a multi-attack, which allows it to deal around 16 damage on average which is actually slightly less than the Sea Lion, but it also has Pack Tactics, which is super good and allows it to actually hit more often. And of course it has the flying speed of 60 feet, so it's able to move around as fast as a warhorse, but in the air. But its stats are kind of low for a CR1 creature. It only has 22 health and an AC of 10. The average AC around this level is about 12, so it's two less than the average, and its health is kind of on the low end as well with some of the more beefy CR1 creatures, like the giant hyena, having as much as 45 health. Although the hyena can't fly, which is a huge advantage that the giant vulture has over it, and it also deals more damage and has pack tactics. Technically, the giant eagle also deals about the same amount of damage on average, and has slightly more health, and even has a faster flying speed at 80 feet. But it doesn't have pack tactics, and pack tactics is kind of really good which is why the giant vulture is generally considered better, because you just have a better chance of actually landing those attacks with the advantage you can potentially obtain. Basically, if a beast has pack tactics on it, that automatically gives it a boost over a lot of other creatures, but it doesn't mean it's automatically better than them. The vulture just also has high damage, so on top of pack tactics is why it makes it on this list, but only the number five spot, with four other CR1 creatures beating it out. And at number 4, we have the Giant Octopus. This is a CR1 creature that can only breathe underwater, but is able to hold its breath for one hour outside of water, so it's a perfectly viable target to turn into outside of aquatic situations. It also has the highest health of all the CR1 beasts, clocking in at a grand total of 52 hit points. It even has higher AC than the Giant Vulture at 11, which is still kind of on the low side. It does deal significantly less damage, it only has one tentacle attack that deals around 10 damage on average, and if it hits, the creature is automatically grappled, which is really good. But it can only move 10 feet on land per turn, so kind of like with the sea lion, it's more useful underwater, but it definitely can be used outside of it as well, and is the tankiest thing you can turn into at this level. And while underwater, it's also great at stealth. Or I guess that stealth works outside of water too, as it has a plus 5 to it. It's just very slow outside of water. And if you use the giant version of the octopus to scout, it has a way to get out with its ink cloud ability, which creates a 20 foot radius of ink that heavily obscures the area and lets you get away, as it also allows you to dash as a bonus action. Although if you want to use the giant octopus to scout underwater, and only to scout, then you're probably better off just turning into a normal octopus, which is a CR0 creature. The normal octopus has all of the same feats and abilities as the giant octopus, 
except it's much smaller, so you could potentially allow it to scout in the same way as a spider, where things might just kind of ignore it. And if it's caught, it could just use its ink cloud to run away too. Although even with the downsides of the giant octopus outside of water, it's still definitely a viable option to pick while inside a dungeon or on land, because of its high HP and the ability to grapple on its attack which hits for a moderate amount of damage. At higher levels, you kind of want utility anyway when it comes to these things, so the more utility you can get, the better. And at number 3, we have the Dire Wolf. This is just a stronger version of the wolf. It has all the same things except it has more stats and higher damage. And of course, the ever elusive pack tactics. At level 8, a druid doesn't care very much about the damage of the creature. However, moon druids are able to turn into CR1 creatures at level 2, as soon as they pick the subclass. So at this point, they're kind of taking it for the damage on these creatures, and not really the utility of the beast like you do at high levels. Now, just like the normal wolf, the dire wolf has a chance to knock a creature prone with its bite. It has a higher chance to hit thanks to pack tactics. It has health on the high end for its challenge rating at 37, higher than average AC at 14, and even a faster move speed at 50. So it can move almost as fast as a warhorse, which is really good. If you want just an all-around beast to turn into that's kind of good at everything, then it's kind of hard to go wrong with the Dire Wolf, since it also has the keen hearing and smell to track targets, plus it's plus 4 to stealth. Although the next two spots on this list definitely deal more damage, if that's all you really care about when it comes to transforming into creatures at the CR1 level. And at number 2, we have the Deinonychus. This is a CR1 dinosaur, so you might have problems turning into it depending on what kind of campaign you're running, as dinosaurs could be considered rare in most games, and has a multi-attack that allows it to attack three times for an average of 18 damage, which is about eight more damage on average than the dire wolf and giant octopus. Although that's kind of where its usability ends, at its ability to do a lot of potential damage. It also has a pounce ability, where if it moves at least 20 feet in a straight line towards a creature and then hits it with its claw attack, it can force the target to do a straight saving throw to not get prone. And if prone, it can then make one bite attack as a bonus action. Doing this is actually less damage than just attacking with its multi-attack, so it's not really a benefit unless you just really want to knock a target prone, which is generally not the case for all the other creatures that have a pounce or charge attack, which a lot of the beasts do. It also has rather low hit points at only 26, barely higher than the giant vulture, slightly above average AC, and a 40 feet of movement. So it's not as fast as the dire wolf, but it is faster than normal. And that's about it. If you want something that does a lot of damage and you really want to turn into a dinosaur, then the Deinonychus is probably your best bet if you have the availability of challenge rating 1 creatures. Although the number one spot on this list does slightly more damage and is a little bit more well-rounded. And at number one, we have the brown bear. This is a CR1 creature which has a multi-attack that allows it to attack twice, once with its bite and then a claw attack. And this little combo deals 19 damage on average, which makes it the highest damage dealer of the CR1 rating beast. And it doesn't have to do anything special for those attacks, which is really good. It also has well-rounded stats. It has 34 hit points, which is around average for this challenge rating. It does only have 11 AC, which is kind of low, but it also has its 40 foot movement speed, which is faster than normal, in addition to a 30 feet climbing speed, which is a very nice bonus. But when it comes to special abilities, it only has keen smell, which isn't the best thing in the world, and the dire wolf also has this ability in addition to keen hearing. So if you want to track something down or just have more versatility, the dire wolf is still kind of the best bet. But if you want something to deal the most amount of damage at this challenge rating while not being a glass cannon, then the brown bear fulfills that purpose perfectly. Which is funny that the black bear, the CR one half creature version of this, is not very good in comparison. It only deals around 12 damage on average, which makes it outclassed by more than half the other beasts at its challenge rating, who are able to do more than just attack. But for whatever reason, the brown bear is just kind of statted a little bit higher at its challenge rating, and beats out all the other beasts when it comes to damage with only its multi-attack, which is why it takes the number one spot on this list. Alright, and that's the list. Are there any other better beasts that I might have missed which should have made this list instead? If so, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, as well as ideas for future videos just like this one. Like maybe a video on the best beast to turn into for moon druids, as they can go all the way up to CR6 creatures. <laughs>